We all know that one of the most stressful times of our lives is the year we take our GCSEs. Millions of students around the UK take their GCSEs every single year. In this documentary, we will be discussing the British educational system and the GCSEs to discover if all the hard work, revision and the exams themselves actually prepare us for future life. We'll be discussing Finland and China's educational system, which people believe to be the, most, the two most successful educational systems in the world, and comparing them to see what makes them so different and why both of these systems are so successful. We will also be interviewing the head teacher of Gillett Secondary School in Henley on Thames to get her views on the GCSEs. And she's also give, given us some access to interview some secondary school students who are revising for their GCSEs to get their opinions across as well. Anyway, without further ado, you're watching Karolina Kaczorowska's and Bartek Kruper's documentary, Set Up to Fail. Finland and China both have very successful educational systems, but what some people may not know is that they are completely different. Finnish education is very simple. No league tables, no uniforms and some of the shortest school days in Europe. The Finnish National Agency of Education state that the main objective of the Finnish educational policy is to offer all citizens equal opportunities to receive education. They believe competition isn't as important as cooperation. They figured out the competition between schools doesn't get kids as far as cooperation between schools. One reason for this is that Finland has no private schools and teachers are trained to issue their own tests instead of standardised tests. Let's move across the whole world to China. China also has one of the best educational systems in the world, but they have a completely different approach than Finland. The educational system in China is considered one of the most challenging and competitive in the world. In China, children begin school when they are 7. School usually starts around 7 or 7.30am and ends at 4pm. At primary school they study three main subjects, Chinese, Maths and English. Although some schools may offer other subjects such as PE, Science, IT, Music and Art. Today Bartek and I are visiting Gillets a secondary school that's based in Henley on Thames. We are first handedly going to get Catherine Darnton's, the head teachers, and the students' views and opinions on this articles and GCSEs in general. How do you think the current education system and GCSEs prepare students for future life? In all honesty, I don't think they do. Um, I think they do to an extent in the sense that they go through academic preparations and teach people things that they need in terms of maths and English and, and stuff like that. But I think as in terms of like personal skills, they could do a lot more. Well, I think the good thing about GCSEs is that students do do a whole range of subjects and I think that's really important that students get a broad general education all the way through to 16. Um, obviously there's a central focus on English and maths which are key skills in terms of numeracy and literacy um, but if you there is space in the curriculum as well for people to do things that they really enjoy so although there's this big focus on the EBAC subjects by keeping uh, Gillett's having four option choices, people do have space to do art or music or drama or PE or business studies or sociology. And there's a whole range of things that they can do alongside. So I think that does give people a really good broad general education to start with. And that's the most important thing you need for whatever you want to do next to specialise. It's very standardised, it's very exam based. It um, doesn't really prepare you for work. I have never had an exam really since I've come into work. Um, I'm not tested on exams, I'm not tested on um, kind of revision for two weeks and then being examined on it for two and a half hours. Um, and that's where GCSEs are, what's where the education system is in this country, um, not just GCSEs but A-levels as well. And that's what um, the typical and the traditional exam education system is it's all about examining you and testing you but that's not setting you up for life and I don't think anybody children or adults should be um, tested and monitored on 
their ability to revise because what's important is their ability to hit deadlines to communicate to work with people to do coursework to do assignments it's not about sitting in an exam room for two and a half hours there's very little personal development that goes on it's more exam driven trying to train people up in order to to get a better grade at the end of the day do you think GCSEs are a fair way of assessing students or do you think it should be more of a mix of exams and coursework? I think most teachers think that it's fairer on students to have a mixture of forms of assessment um, and in fact that's really how it's been since the GCSEs were invented in 1988. I don't think it should be exams at all. Um, the way it's got at the moment it's more exams so A levels especially and GCSEs we've gone from 50-50 examinations coursework to now 70 exam, 30% coursework, which I think has just gone backwards, it's the wrong way. A mix is better, personally. Um, I think you, people learn in different ways and knowledge shouldn't just be tested in, like, in a test as like a memory test to see what you can remember. I think having a chance to apply it through doing coursework shows that you do understand it and you can use it rather than you can just remember a process of how to replicate it. I think probably the 100% exam isn't right and that a, a, a balance would be better. But the balance should be driven by um, what it is that you want to assess. So it might be the case that it maths, the thing, the most important thing is to assess it through exams. But if you're assessing PE, it seems really sensible that practical assessments form the majority of it because that's what the, that's what the qualification needs. So the phrase you're, we would use for that in teacher speak is authentic assessment. So it's assessment that matches the skills that you want pupils to develop. So if you want to know what skills you assess, you know what skills you want to assess, you then choose the assessment that, that most authentically allows you to do that. Do you think that the Education Board could do anything else to make students more prepared for future lives? Take away exams. Not all exams. Um, sometimes you need an exam. You need a test to do your driving lessons and stuff like that. So you need to have some kind of ability to sit in the room and do an exam and be tested. I think they could they could just bring in more 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 time spent focusing on the actual student as a person rather than just a number within the, the school um, would make a big difference like having someone who actually listens to them and gets to know them I think makes a big difference to not just how they grow but how they perform in school as well I think if they feel like they're, they're actually cared about that makes a big difference to how they, the sort of effort that they put into it. It was interesting, I was talking to someone in my classes a couple of weeks ago and they were really interested in things about how, how money works and how uh, interest rates work and how um, banks work and they were saying it would be good if we could have more things like that in the curriculum. I think, I think it's quite a difficult balance because some students are interested in that when they're younger but other students just find that like something that's so far away that they can't think about it. And I think, um, you know, we know that students, when we have our personal, social and health education days, some students think of those as a waste of time because there are more important things to do. But actually, the relationships education, the education we give people about democracy in those days, that's all actually education about having the wider skills. And so I think the difficulty is about making sure that people feel that what they're doing is valuable and that it meets their needs at the time that they, uh, they, that, they, that they want it. So it may be that we need to think more broadly about how, you know, when you first get a mortgage, you could actually go to a session on how mortgages work, or when you're first going to be a parent, you can get more support in parenting. That it may be that actually school's not quite the right place to do that because it's, it's too far ahead for some young people. And when you come, I have GCSC students obviously coming to me, um, and they don't know how to communicate, they don't know how to hit a deadline, they don't know how to work with people because all they've learnt for the past five years is how to sit and revise for two weeks, sit by themselves for two hours and that's all they know how to do. So there recently was a report on the news about Robert Halfhorn. He's a former MP and a chairman of Education Select Community. It was about his take on GCSEs. He said that they are pointless and therefore should be scrapped and replaced with a baccalaureate style qualifications, qualification to combat the lack of skills that young people possess right now and to recognise academic and technical skills alongside personal development. What is your take on his view? 
So his view is a very radically different education system from the one that we've got now. I think that's the most sensible thing that's come out of government, to be honest. Um, I think that's the way it should be. Um, it, it, it's in line with vocational courses. It's in line with um, teaching the academic side, but also teaching personal skills, also teaching life skills, um, which you don't get from exams. You don't get life skills from sitting exam at all. And that is what this country lacks. And that's where we're failing in education, but also in employment as you guys go on to be employed. People don't know how to communicate. They don't have life skills. They don't have any of that because the education system is letting them down by focusing solely on exam, 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 exam. And it's not right, it's not reality. I think having a combination of, like you say, that the more academic stuff, the core things that people, they do need in terms of like with their spelling, their written language, their spoken English, their use of maths, um, they're all important, but having them technical skills as well, I think would, it opens up more avenues for people. And I think, so the, the first thing that um, those of us who work in the education sector would say is, well, hang on a minute, because that's huge. You know, that's not something that you can change in five minutes. And we've just been through a huge period of change, um, not just the GCSEs, but the A-levels have changed as well. Um, the primary curriculum has changed, the primary tests have changed. And actually, one of the things that politicians are very bad at remembering is that young people take 14 years to get through the exam system um, and the school system. And really, you shouldn't be messing, in my view, you shouldn't be really messing around with it. Once they've started, they should be on a plan. And so um, that sort of very radical change would, would take a lot of time. Um, it would also take a lot of money. And that's one of the things politicians are really bad at. So the changes that we've had to face now in schools, we haven't had any money. And money matters because when you're teaching something new, you need new textbooks, you need to train teachers. Teachers actually need time to plan for changes. That time costs money as well. And we didn't get any money to do that. So I think, you know, it's all very well saying you'd like this to happen, but unless you can say this is the resource that's going to go next to it. I, and it would be to, to move away from having exams at 16 to only having exams at 18 would be a huge change in this country where there are still a lot of schools uh, like Gillett's, which are 11 to 16. It's unusual in Oxfordshire, but whole counties like Hampshire and Cambridge are organised that way. So, you, you know, if you're not going to have any exams at 16, does that mean you're not going to have any 11 to 16 schools? So what does that mean? So it, there, it's an interesting idea and it's one that people have talked about before because if students are going to stay at school until they're 18, is there any point in doing exams earlier? And I think it's worth, I think it's worth a debate, but it's, it's, there's a lot more behind it than sort of a couple of sound bites. And I think also if we were going to go on having a general education to 18 and a baccalaureate then, we'd almost certainly be looking at a four-year university course, not a three-year course, which would be the pattern that there is in Scotland. And again, that costs a lot more money. So where's the money coming from that? So I think there's a, you know, interesting idea, but so much to unpack before you could decide that it was realistic. And then huge commitments in terms of time and money in order to be able to deliver it. And I'm not sure that's realistic at this kind of stage in the economic cycle. Do you think GCSEs are preparing you for future life? Uh, okay, so in a way, I think they are in terms of like knowledge and that sort of thing, which everything that you learn in school for your GCSEs I feel like is all building towards like making you the kind of person that you are and uh, like teaching you some of the things that you need to know but um, I don't think it teaches you like, everything that you need to know. Um, I think some of the skills you learn teach you good things and how to apply good skills for the future but I don't think a lot of the stuff we learn is very useful for life after that. Um, yeah, in the short term, I think they'll help with A-levels and uni and stuff, but I, I reckon once you get to a job, they won't care as much about your GCSEs and stuff. Yeah. What do you think could be done to prepare you more for future life? So, I'd say that more kind of information, like careers advice and that kind of thing, because for me, for example, I don't know what I want to do in the future and I never have really known and although you do sometimes get like careers appointments and that kind of thing it's always more directed at like universities and A-levels just like the next step in the ladder rather than like what comes at the end of it. Um, I think we could look at um, things and skills that we need for after Gillett's and after GCSE so like how to get a job, more interview skills, 
things like that and just career advice? Uh, maybe make the GCSEs more specific about stuff you actually want to do rather than having like a massive array of stuff you do because I'm learning about like stuff which I don't need from when I'm older so it should be to more what I want to do rather than what the school wants me to do. What do you think of the idea that the Education Board should scrap GCSEs and what do you think could replace them? So I think overall that they shouldn't be scrapped because that's what kind of keeps people in school and I think everyone does need to go to school to prepare them for, the future li for their future lives um, but I think they could maybe be replaced with something more kind of work focused rather than being so broad because you learn so much in school that you then never need to like apply so they could be replaced with stuff that's more kind of specific to a particular field of work. Um, I think it's quite a good idea. I think there should be more assessed work, more assessed class work, so that your work is assessed all the time rather than just one exam at the end of the years. I think maybe if it wasn't GCSEs, maybe more like external exams or something, not in school, maybe, to like test you more about your stuff you're doing uh, and like more specific exams rather than loads of stuff which you might not necessarily know which is in the exam. This was a Henley on Thames documentary by Carolina Kaczorowska and Bartek Kreeper.